Uh, today we will see uh, a different type of staircases and we'll do the design of different type of staircases. Some of the most commonly used staircases are a stress stair, quarter turn stair, dog leg stair, open well stair. Use of spiral stair and helicoidal stairs are very commonly used in regular practice. Geometrical configuration, slab spanning longitudinally. This is the ground floor, this is mid landing, this is first floor, and this uh, stairs are supported at its edge through a beam, column, or wall, and they span longitudinally. So they are known as slab spanning longitudinally. And this is the horizontal projection of landing. This is the horizontal projection of landing. And this is the horizontal projection of flight, which is known as total going. Okay. Geometrical configuration, slab spanning transversely. Slab cantilevered from a spandle beam or wall. This can be a spandle beam or a wall. This is the width of flight, which is cantilevered from this beam or wall. Slab doubly cantilevered from a central spine beam. This is a central spine beam. This is the width of flight. Slab supported on stringer beam or walls on side. This can be beams or wall. And uh, this is width of flight, which uh, spans transversely. So, these are some of the examples uh, where slab spans transversely, right? Now, live loads to be considered. 5 kN per meter square in general. 3 kN per meter square where overcrowding is unlikely, okay? For cantilever steps, con concentrated live load of 1.3 kN is applied at the free edge of each cantilever step. All the loads are to be multiplied by factor 1.5. Now we will start design of a staircase. The design is staircase can deliver from RCC ball having independent trade base and trade slab with riser 150 mm and trade 280 mm with width of stair equal to 1.6 meters. This is a wall and this is a step rotating out the wall. This is the riser 150 mm. This is trade 280 mm. Okay. The staircase is for residential building, which is not likely to be overcrowded. So we will take our live load as uh, 3 kN per meter square. Use M20 grade concrete, FE415 steel, and weather condition is mild. So when weather condition is mild, we will take our clear cover as 20 mm. Okay. So given to us, width of stair is 1.6 meters, riser is 150 mm, thread is 2. 80 mm, F5 is 415, FCK is 20. Let us assume the thickness of cantilever thread slab D equal to width of stair, that is 1.6 meters divided by 10, that is 160 mm. So we are assuming the thickness of uh, this thread slab as 160 mm. Okay. This is an individual slab, okay. individual uh, step, cantilever step. So assume Clear cover for mild condition equal 20 mm as per 20, table 16, IS 456 2000. So, according to this table, we have to take minimum uh, clear cover as 20 mm. Okay. Now, calculation of dead load is the first step. Okay. We will find the uh, dead load for this step. Please remember when we are doing a design of cantilever slab, then the load has to be in kilonewton per meter. Okay. Self fit of thread slab is 25 into 0.28 into 1.6, sorry, 0.16 is equal to 1.12 kN per meter. Floor finish we are taking as 0.75 kN per meter square into width of this thread is equal to 0.21 kN per meter. So total factor load is 1.5 into this two load that is 1.995 kN meter. Calculation of live loads. Factor load we are taking as 3 kN per meter square into width of this step that is 0.28 into 1.5 is the factor that is equal to 1.26 kN per meter. Now we also have to consider a live load of a, uh, as a point load at free edge of each step that is 1.3 kN into 1.5 is the factor that is equal to 1.95 kN. Now we will consider two cases and from which we will take the maximum bending moment and shear force. 
We will consider two cases and will take the maximum bending moment and shear force for the design. First alternate. In first alternate, you have to take uh, the total of dead load and imposed load. UTM. So considering live load plus dead load acting on the cantilever staircase, bending moment at the support is found to be 4.166 km. And shear force at the support is found to be 5.21 km. Alternative 2. Over here we will consider uh, only dead load and live load we will consider as a point load that is 1.3 acting at the pH of the step, 1.5 is the factor. Okay, so this will be equal to 1.95. Okay. Considering point load plus dead load acting on the cantilever staircase, bending moment at support is equal to dead load into 1.6 into 1.6 into 0.5 plus this is 1.95 into 1.6 that is equal to 5.673 and shear force at the support is dead load into 1.6 plus 1.95 that is equal to 5.142 km. So we have to take maximum out of these two cases over here we got bending moment 4.166, here we get 5.673, so larger is 5.673, so we will take this in consideration. Over here we got shear force 5.21, here it is 5.142, we will take shear force as 5.21 kN. Now, find the effective depth. Overall depth is 160 minus clear cover 20 minus the stirrup diameter which we are going to assume we are going to use as 8 mm and minus half the diameter of the bar we are going to use 10 mm bar okay as our main steel so this is the section this is 160 overall depth minus clear cover minus stirrup and minus half the diameter of the bar okay this is how we get d so d is equal to 160 minus 20 minus 8 minus 5 10 divided by 2 is 5 that is equal to 127 mm. Okay. Now let us find the steel. Okay, for this moment, using this formula, okay, we get AST is equal to 134.31, which should be greater than minimum. That is for slab 0.12 percent, which is 53.76 mm square. So as it is greater, so okay, right? So let us provide two 10 mm dia bars as main steel which will turn out to be 157 mm square, which is greater than 134.31 mm square. So, okay. And let us provide minimum steel at the bottom of the two 10 mm bars, okay, over here, right? We can provide two 8 mm bars also over here, a minimum, because minimum steel required is 53 uh, mm square, uh, whereas uh, two dia, two dia, Two bars of 8 mm will give an area of 100 mm, but still we are providing 10 mm uh, dia bars because, uh, to, because we have to um, pass the check for deflection. Okay. Now, the ne next step is check for shear. PT percentage is found to be 0 0.442. Okay. Permissible shear stress tau C from table 19 IS 456-2000 for PT 0 0.442 and M20 we found to be 0.456 Newton per mm square. Now nominal shear stress is V divided by BD. We found V that is 5.21. Okay, so 5.21 divided by B is 280, D is 127. So this is 0.1465 Newton per mm square, which is less than tau C. So it is safe. Okay. So we will provide uh, minimum uh, two leg stirrups about about 200 mm, which should be less than lesser of five times the D or 450 mm. Our D is 127, uh, so 127 I think. Ah, uh, 120 D is 127. So five into 127 is more greater than 500. This is 450. We are providing 200, so it is safe. Okay. So this is the uh, detailing of the individual. Thread M. So this is our main steel. Okay, these are stirrups. Okay, two leg, uh, two two ten dia bar at top. Okay, main steel. 
two ten dia bar at bottom. That is this two ten. That is minimum chill we are providing at the bottom. And this syrups are at two late eight mm syrups about two hundred mm. Okay, over here. Our D is one twenty seven mm. This is our top steel is going to be main steel because it is cantilever beam, so tension is going to be at top. So the development length for this bars should be greater than or equal to 50 times the diameter of the bar if it is anchored in a compression member. If anchored in a flexure member, if this is this bar is continued uh, to the adjoining uh, flexure member, then the development length should be greater than or equal to 1.5 times the span of the cantilever. This span of the cantilever. Okay. Now check for deflection. Okay. So Fs is the for this is the formula given in the code. We found out to be Fs uh, to be 205. So from figure 4 of IS for 5 uh, 456 2000, Fs is 205, Pt is 0.4, 0.442. We get Kt equal to 1.3. Now Pt and Ptc both are same because in bottom also we are providing two 10 mm bars. Okay. So from figure five of IS 456 2000 for PT, PTC equal to 0.442 and KC, KC is found to be 1.14. Now this is formula given in the code. L by D allowable is equal to L by D basic into KT into KC. For cantilever L by D basic is 7 and uh, KT is 1.6, KC is 1.14 which is equal to 12.768. LD actual is uh, twelve point six, which is less than this, so it is safe and okay. Okay. So this is how which uh, the design of this uh, dread slab is completed. Now, design a design a staircase cantilevered from RCC ball having tread riser slab stair slab with riser one fifty mm and tread two eighty mm, and the width of the staircase is one point six meters. This is the wall, okay, from which this cantilever is protruding out, okay. The width is 1.6 meter, riser is 150 mm, tread is 280 mm, okay. Now, the staircase is for residential building which is not likely to be overcrowded. So, we will take live load as 3 kN per meter square. Use M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. Weather condition is mild, so we'll take clear cover as 20. Given to us, staircase width is 1.6, riser is 150 mm, thread is 280 mm, FI is 415 mm, FC is 20 mm. Let us assume the thickness of cantilever thread slab D equal to width of stair divided by 10. This is 1.6 meters divided by 10, it is 160 mm. Usually, but Third riser thickness is not given greater than 150 mm, it varies from 150, uh, 100 mm to 150 mm. So we will consider the thickness as 150 mm. Okay. This is thickness, this is thickness, 150 mm. This is riser, this is tread. Okay. Now, assuming uh, mild, assuming clear curve for mild condition is equal to 20 as equal to uh, table 16. Okay, I score 5, 6, 2000. 20 mm is a clear curve. That is what we are assuming. Now, how to find the dead weight of this staircase? In this case, you can take an Z section, half tread to half tread. Okay, and you can find the dead weight of this. And this will act as a beam which will take the load. So, this is the formula which you can use for, find, for finding the self weight of third riser slab okay 25 kilometer per meter cube into t plus r this is t this is r this is riser into d this is s d okay this is d that will give you the load in kilonewton per meter okay please remember this is a cantilever circuit so the load should be in kilonewton per meter right okay so calculation of dead loads self weight of and thread riser slab okay using this formula we get 1.6125 kN per meter floor finish is 0.75 kN per meter square into width of the stair that is thread width of the uh, thread that is 0.2 that is equal to 
0.21 kilo newton meter so factor dead load is 1.5 into uh, addition of this two okay 1.6125 plus 0.21 that is equal to 2.733 a calculation of live loads factor live load we are taking as 3 kilo newton per meter square into a width of tread into 1.5 factor that is 1.26 we also have to consider uh, a point load as live load of 1.3 kilo newton into 1.5 that is equal to 1.95 right kilo newton So we will consider two cases and we will take the maximum bending moment and shear first for the design. First of all, just consider dead load and imposed load factored. Okay. So bending moment at the support is found to be 5.112 kN meter. Shear force at the support is found to be 6.388 kN meter. Second alternate, take factor dead load and live load as a point load. That is 1.3 into 1.5, that is 1.95 kN. Consider the point load plus the dead load acting on the cantilever staircase. Bending moment at support is found to be 6.618. Shear force at support is found to be 6.3228. So the maximum bending moment of, out of these two is 6.618. So we will take that. Maximum shear force is 6.388. Okay. So we will take that, right? Now, we will design the staircase for this moment in this year. Now find the effective depth D. D is total D minus clear cover minus diameter of stirrup minus half the diameter of the bar. We are going to use 10 mm diameter. So, in case of cantilever trailer as a staircase, this steel is going to be the main steel and this stirrups are going to be distribution steel, right? So, this is clear cover plus stirrup diameter plus main diameter by 2. Okay. Clear cover plus stirrup plus half this diameter, right? This is equal to this. The remaining is effective at D. This is equal to uh, 300 minus 20 minus stirrup we are going to use as 8 mm minus half the diameter of for 10 mm, right? So 300 minus 20 minus 8 minus 5 that is 267. D is 267. Now B, this is B, that is 150 mm. Now we will do the design. Let us find the steel for this moment using this formula. We find EST as 71.3 mm square, which should be greater than uh, AS minimum. Okay, this is the formula for minimum steel in case of B, which is 82 mm square. This is less than this. We will have to apply at least this area of steel so let us provide two dia two mm uh, two eight mm dia bars as main steel this will turn out to be 100.5 mm square which is greater than 82 mm square okay so it will be safe right and provide three eight mm dia bar as minimum steel at a bottom at each corner of the stirrup as shown in figure below okay so this two will act as the main steel and this 8 mm diabars, which we have to provide at corner of stirrups, will be the corner steel, or you, it, you can also say the distribution steel. And this uh, stirrups, which we see over here, are also going to be distribution steel, right? So, these two bars are these two bars, and they have to be anchored properly. Okay, the anchor length should be greater than 50 times the diameter of the bar for tensile bar and these bars are shown over here okay so these are three bars okay now check for shear pt is found to be 0.25 percent permissible shear stress tau c from table 19 is 456 2000 for pt equal to 0.25 and m20 grade is 0.36 newton per mm square Nominal shear stress tau v is equal to v divided by vd. V we found over here 6.388 kilonewton. Okay, so this is what we are going to take over here. B is 150. Okay, this is B is 150, right? And D we know 
is one uh, two sixty seven, right? We found D is two sixty seven. Right? So this gives tau tau V is point one five nine, which is less than tau C. So uh, okay, we will provide minimum uh, syrup that is two leg eight mm about two hundred mm center to center. It will be less than lesser of point seventy five D three hundred or this formula, right? So it is less than all this all, all the three. So it is okay, right? So that is why we have provided uh, this stirrups, okay? That is at eight mm, about uh, eight mm diameter, two leg stirrups, about two hundred mm. Okay, so these are the stirrups you can see over here, right? These are to be provided at two hundred mm spacing, okay? So this is how you can do the design of a uh, cantilever thread riser slab. Okay. okay. Now coming to the problem three, design a dog leg waist slab types uh, design a dog leg waist slab type stair supported on its edges parallel to riser with riser of 150 mm and tread equal to 280 mm. Okay. So this is uh, our uh, staircase. This is the support. Okay. Support parallel to riser. Okay. So over here, the landing is spanning in the direction of the flight. Okay, the spanning of flight and the landing will be the same. They are, they will be in the same direction. Okay, okay. Now riser, riser is one fifty mm and tread is two eighty mm. Okay, okay. So now let us uh, proceed further. The height of a story is three meter. The height of a story is three meter. Okay. Right, and the width of the flight is 1.5 meter and the landing is 3.15 meter. Okay, this is the width of flight 1.5 meter. This is width of landing 3.15 meter. Okay, now assume the line load to be 3 kilometer per meter square. Use M20 grade concrete FE415 steel grade and the weather condition is mild, so we'll take clear cover as 20 mm. Okay. So given to us, riser 150, trade 280, uh, FI is 415, FCK is 20, width of flight is 1.5, width of landing is 3.15. Let us first calculate the number of steps required to climb the story. The number of riser required is height of story, that is 3000 mm or 3 meters, okay, divided by height of riser, that is 150 mm, will give you 20 risers, okay. So you have to provide 20 risers to Climb one floor, first riser, tenth riser, and twentieth riser. Okay, so you will have total eighteen threads. Okay, you can see this figure. Okay. Now, coming to the effective span of stair, we will we fall in this uh, clause where the landing slab spans in the same direction as stair. They shall be considered as acting together in form a single slab. And the span determined as distance center to center of the supporting beam wall or going being measured horizontally. Okay. So this is our support. This is our support. So from the center of this support to the center of this support. Okay. So this will be our effective span. Okay. This is landing. This is landing. And this is total going okay horizontal projection of this flight is known as total going so we will also find the dead load in uh, horizontal plane right though this is inclined but we will apply the loading over here for the horizontal span okay so calculate the dead load for ongoing so this is a total going so first we'll find the dead uh, dead load in this area okay now please remember when this uh, slab, when when the spanning is longitudinal, okay, then we will design this as a slab, okay, and we will take one meter strip for this. So the load will be in kilonewton per meter square, okay. So let us assume the effective depth of a slab as span divided by eight. That is, this is our span, okay, divided by twenty-eight. That is point one nine seven. So let us assume overall depth equal to two to five. We are assuming overall depth is 2 to 5 mm. Okay. Right. Now, B is equal to this is T, this is R, red riser, and this is B. Okay. 
So this B is equal to under root of T square plus R square. That is equal to 317.65. We have to find this D because we want to find the loading uh, on the horizontal projection, right? So we have to find this D and that D is equal to thickness of space slab that is 225 into B divided by T that is equal to 255.25 mm. So this is 225 this is 255.25 mm, okay? So this is the formula for finding the self weight of space slab that is 25 into D, this D and uh, for steps it is 25 into point R, okay? Point 0.5 R. So we are taking this as an average rectangle, right? This will give us load in kilometer per meter square. So using this formula, self-weight calculation of dead loads on, on, on going, okay? We are first finding for going, okay, ongoing. So using the uh, formula below, self-weight of waste lab is found to be 6.38 kilometer per meter square. Self-weight of step is found to be 1.875 kilometer per meter square. Floor finish is 0.75 km per meter square. So factor load that load uh, is ongoing is 1.5 into this plus this plus this, 13.5 km per meter square. 13.5 km per meter square. This is our dead load. Okay. Now coming to the next step, calculation of dead loads on landing. Okay. So this is our landing. This is our landing. Oh, landing uh, depth is 2 to 5. Okay, first step depth is also 2 to 5. This landing depth is also 2 to 5. Okay, so for this case, D will be 2 to 5, right? Okay, so self weight on landing, self weight of a slab will be D into 2 to 5. Okay, this D you have to take as this D. Okay, but I have taken as this D, uh, so the load is going to be a little bit conservative and. Uh, more than actual required or actual to be taken. Uh, so design is slightly conservative, don't worry. Okay. So, but actual you have to take this D. Okay. So self fit of a slab is 6.38 kilometer meter square. Floor finish is 0.75 kilometer per meter square. The factor dead load on landing is 1.5 into this plus this, that is 10.695 kilometer per meter square. Okay. It, it will be meter square. Yeah. That is equal to this and this. So these are dead loads, right? Dead load on landing, dead load on landing, dead load on going. So now let us uh, calculate the live load. Factor live load is 3 kilometer meter square into 1.5, that is 4.5 kilometer meter square. So this is 4.5, 4.5, 4.5. So this is our loading condition. We can see the loading condition is symmetrical. So RA will be equal to RB. And the maximum bending moment will be at the mid span of this uh, beam, right? So, RA is found to be 45.47 kN. The moment at the mid span is found to be 65.39 kN. Okay, so calculate the mean steel required for bending moment M is equal to uh, 65.39 kN. First find the effective depth D, that is overall depth D minus clear cover minus diameter of the bar divided by 2. We are going to use 12 mm dia bar as our main steel, okay? So 2 pi is our uh, thickness of a slab, okay? Minus clear cover 20 minus 6 is equal to 199. So effective depth D is 199. Find AST using this formula. AST is found to be 1012. 0.3 mm square, which should be greater than AST, min AST minimum, that is 0.12 percent, that is equal to 238. So, okay. Now, let us find the center to center spacing, which turns out to be 111. We are using 12 mm dia bar, okay. So this is the area of 12 mm dia bar. So, spacing is found to be 111 mm. Let us provide 12 mm dia bar, about 100 mm center to center sp spacing, which is less than maximum allowed spacing, okay. The spacing, our maximum spacing should be lesser of this two, right? This is 3D or 300 mm. Okay, so 3D or uh, D is 199. So this will be equal to round about 600. This is 300. We are providing 100. So it's okay, safe, right? So EST will again change because spacing we have reduced. So EST will increase. That is equal to 1130. OPT found is 0.567 percentage. Check for shear. Okay, 
corresponding tau c is found to be 0.49 for pt is equal to 0.567 fck is 20 using is 456 2000 table 90 nominal shear stress is equal to v divided by by bd v is this ra right ra 45.47 right this is our v divided by b v you take 1 meter strip we are taking 1 meter design 1 meter strip 1000 d is 199 so this is 0 0.2273 less than 0.49 so okay and so this the main steel provided in case of a uh, flight in, in going we can say is safe okay now we have to find the distribution still required in the going portion so est minimum is equal to 0.12 percent okay which is equal to 2.2 mm square okay so spacing required for we are going to use 10 mm diameter as distribution steel is equal to 290.74. We will provide 10 mm bars about 250 mm center to center, which is less than maximum allowed spacing. The maximum allowed spacing should be lesser of this to 5D or 450. Of course, it is less than, so it is okay, right? So we found that our main steel, why main steel we are providing is 12 mm dia, about 100 mm. So this is our main steel, right? 12 mm about 100 mm this is our main steel okay right this is also our main steel right and 50% uh, of this steel is uh, of this main steel we can be provided over here as top steel that is 12 mm about 200 mm right distribution steel we found okay that is 10 mm about 250 mm all this cross section dots that distribution steel right that can that is uh, to be given it 10 mm about 250 mm. A very important point. This uh, main steel has to be taken to the top over here. You cannot find it at the bottom over here because as this bar is in tension, uh, the resultant will be in this direction. So if you bend this, then the resultant will crack this cover and the steel will come out. Okay. So it is necessary to give enough depth when you turn this part okay. over here you get enough effective depth d that will be enough uh, to take this resultant r okay so this is how uh, you can do the design of a uh, waste lab dog leg waste lab we will repeat this same example as according uh, to a thread riser type type okay design a dog leg thread riser type style supported at its edges parallel to riser with riser of 150 mm and thread equal to 280 mm. The height of the story is 3 meter and the width of the flight is 1.5 meter and the landing is 3.15 meter. Same as exactly above the example, the above example, just as we saw. Assume the live load uh, to be provided is 3 kN per meter square. Use M20 concrete and FE415 steel grade and weather condition is mild. When the weather condition is mild, we will use our clear cover as 20 mm right so given to us riser 150 thread 280 fi 415 fck 20 width of flight 1.5 width of landing 3.15 calculate the number of riser which we calculated that was equal to 20 mm okay uh, 20 numbers okay as we seen above we have to provide 20 risers and 18 threads right so find the effective uh okay from the point of aesthetic view, let us consider the thickness of step as 150 mm. Okay, the thickness we are considering as 150 mm. Okay. This is thickness, this is thickness, okay. this is thickness, D. This is also thickness, right? This is riser, this is tray. Okay, so effective depth D is equal to 150, okay? So this is 150 mm, right? Minus 20 mm is the thickness cover, and we are going to use uh, stirrups uh, of 12 mm diameter. Okay, the stirrups now will be our main steel because it is spanning longitudinally, right? And the uh, uh, steel provided at the corner of stirrups will be distribution steel. Okay, so this is 150 minus 20 clear cover. Okay, this is total 150 minus clear cover 20 minus half the diameter of the that is our main reinforcement okay that is 12 divided by 2 
that is 124 mm okay now we will find the dead loads and uh, live loads on going this is our going finding the self fit of thread rise slab this is the formula please remember this is uh, uh, spanning longitudinally so we are going to uh, design it as a one meter uh, slab strip right so the load has to be in kilonewton per meter square so this is the formula 25 into t plus r this is t this is r into d this is in d divided by t okay this is t right so this is equal to uh, 5.7 Five eight kilometer per meter square. Finish load we are taking as 0.75 kilometer per meter square. Live load we are taking as three kilometer per meter square. So total factor load on going is 1.5 into addition of this, that is equal to 14.262 kilometer per meter square. Okay, 14.62 kilometer per meter square. This is total load, dead load plus live load. Okay. Now coming to the calculation of dead loads and live load on landing. Okay, this is landing portion. Right. This is Landing, this is landing, okay. The so self weight is found as 25 into D, okay. D is 150 mm, okay. That is equal to 3.75 km per meter square. Finished load we are taking as 0.75 km per meter square. Live load we are taking as 3 km per meter square. So total factor load is 1.5 into addition of this 3, that is equal to 11.25 km per meter square. This is 11.25, 11.25, and this is load on going right you can see the load is symmetrical so ra will be equal to rb ra is found to be 34.84 the maximum bending moment will be at the mid span because the loading is symmetrical so moment is found to be 50.92 kilometer now we have to find the main still required for this moment okay so d that D is capital D minus clear curve 20 minus diameter of bar. We are using 12 mm diameter bar, so 12 divided by 2. 150 minus 20 minus 6, that is 124. So putting the value over here, we get ASK as 1529.3. Let us find the spacing by this formula. Area of 12 mm diameter bar, that is 113. That is equal to 73.89 mm. We will provide 12 mm uh, stirrups at 70 mm center to center. Okay, our mean steel is stirrups. Okay, please remember. So, stirrups at 70 mm center to center. Right. So, EST provided is found to be 1614 because as we are reducing the spacing, of course, the EST provided will be increased, which should be greater than EST minimum, that is 0.12 BD, 180 mm square. Okay. So, PT is found to be 1.3%. Now check for shear. We found tau C, permissible shear stress, that is equal to 0 0.675, for PT equal to 1.3, FPK 20, and uh, using table 19 of IS456-2000. So find the nominal shear stress, that is reaction divided by BD. Reaction is found to be 34.84, okay, 34.84, we get tau V is 0 0.281, which is less than tau C. So, okay, right? Now, distribution steel required in steps. So, as this is our main steel, the stirrups are going to be the main steel. Distribution will be just providing 8 mm bar at the corner of the stirrups. Okay. So, we can see over here, right? This is, uh, this are going to be the main steel, right? Stirrups. So, that stirrups are 12 mm, about 70 mm. Okay, 70 mm. This has to be spaced as 70 mm center. Right. Right. Okay. Now, distribution still in landing. Okay. So, AST minimum is 0.12 B into D. Okay. So, that is equal to, uh, we are going to use 8 mm bar as distribution steel. Uh, so, that is equal to, we get spacing equal to 2.22. So let us provide 8 mm bars about 250 mm instead of 8 to 250. Uh, so which is less than lesser of the D or 450 mm. Okay. So D is 124. So this will be greater than 500. This is 450. We are providing 250. So it's so this is the longitudinal section of the landing. Okay. So this is the main steel. Okay. 
which has to be provided to lip well mm stirrups at 70 mm and internal this dots are the distribution speed in landing that is 8 mm about 250 mm center right which we obtained from over here so this is how you can uh, draw this and uh, so the distribution is shown over here 8 mm at 250 mm blue are uh, blue dimension blue are and black distribution still right okay okay uh, so i hope uh, you must have found this uh, session useful uh, other type of problems of uh, staircase we will see in part two of staircase uh, for this part one we end over here thank you